And I wonder Dude, how our next guest fries a fish. This guy is. I'm sure he has fried a fish at some remote part of in the Costa world. Rica or some island in the Pacific, you know, like uh, Samoa or something. He's been everywhere. Just got to follow him <laughs> right? on Instagram and on Twitter. These baldy breakdowns are just phenomenal. He, and he, and they're, they're, get, they're getting better, man. And he's one of the busiest guys this week, and he's given us a couple minutes. Baldy, welcome to the show, man. How are you? Harry, Aton, it's good to be with you guys, man. I miss you all. I know. I miss you brother. too. Tell us the most remote part of the world in which you fried fish. <laughs> uh... I think I probably did some down in, like, uh, well, some remote parts of Panama for sure. Panama. Love it. But maybe, like, maybe down, like, in Asuncion, like, um, outside of Brazil someplace probably mm -hmm. as well, down to some beach in Santos, Brazil, <laughs> I'm sure, uh, something like that. I'm, I'm, I'm sure somewhere in Central or South America, we, we definitely have done some, or Cuba, some, you know, beach off of Cuba, Trinidad, or, uh, you know, some of the other places we were down there. He's been everywhere it's with amazing. the travel dogs, and you can, you can follow all this along on his Instagram, at BaldyNFL, and on Twitter, at BaldyNFL, and that's where he also does all these breakdowns of all these draft prospects, man. It's it's fascinating, awesome Baldy. Stuff. Yeah, thanks, Harry. I've I enjoyed doing it. I just... You know, I just did one on Rashawn Gary, and I was pretty down on him. I just couldn't find the production. Mm -hmm. And then I met him last Thursday, and I was around him a lot. You know, like these, these players, you know, they'll kind of tell you some things in private. The guy played with a real damaged shoulder all year. I uh, played a very disciplined system for Don Brown at Michigan. But then you go back and watch 2017, ta 2017 tape when he was healthy, and you almost see a completely different player. Mm. And then if you take the read option that all college teams basically run some form of, and you take that out of the NFL game, you let him just go rush the quarterback, I think you're looking at a 6'5", 285-pound guy that can really run that I think is going to be a really good NFL player. And so I just sort of revised you know, my whole take on him, mm. going back and watching 2017 this morning. Baldy, I'm curious. If you were to take the quarterbacks, Kyler Murray first and then other quarterbacks, out of this equation, uh, what player's tape jumps out the most? And regardless of position, this year's draft, where when you watch tape of this specific player, it's can't miss and you just equate it to the other tape that's jumped out in years past. Well, I mean, Nikhil Harry, uh, the wide receiver from Arizona State, yeah. I mean, there's, there's no way that you can't like this guy. He started every game since he walked on. Well, no, he wasn't a walk-on. Since he was recruited at Arizona State, he played in every single position on the offense, whether it's the slot, you know, outside, in the backfield. Um, he's been healthy. He looks like the strong side linebacker that you'd love to have. I mean, he's as big and strong. He's bigger and stronger than T.O. Mm. Um, wow. He's he's really a, and he's a fantastic guy. Like he he's into this game of football now. I was just spent time with him on Friday. But, you know, when you're around him, you're like, wow. I mean, he's a bigger Anquan Bolden. He mm. reminds me of Sterling. In fact, I, I texted Sterling Sharp when I met him. And I said, this guy is the closest guy I've seen that re reminds me of you. Wow. Like how strong he is and what he's built like. And then there's Jonathan Abram at Mississippi State, the, the safety. I mean, he's just a barn boss. Like He's just, I mean, he hits everything that moves full speed. I don't know how long, like he's been healthy at Mississippi State. He hasn't missed games. Uh, he started his career at Georgia. He started day one at Georgia. He transferred, ended up starting the last two years at Mississippi State. I mean, those two guys. And then Jeffrey Simmons, who to me was the best defense lineman in this whole draft. He looked like in Dominican Sioux to me. And then he tore his ACL in February. So He's he, a Mississippi he's State kid too, right? He's yeah. a Mississippi he's, State he's guy. Just, yeah. yeah, number 94. Yeah, he was coached by a friend of mine, Brian Baker. Oh. at Mississippi State, who's now the defensive line coach for Nick Saban in Alabama. But that guy physically reminds me of Fletcher Cox. I mean, wow. he, and he might, he, he might be a better version of Fletcher Cox. I don't know yet, but because I don't want to say that after we've seen Fletcher here in five years. But, I mean, this guy is going to be a really good NFL player. Hey, uh, Baldy, uh, you know, obviously we can hit a lot of teams here, you know, being, being on a South Jersey, uh, Philadelphia area radio station. I'd like to just, you know, sort of whip around here. Uh, yeah. The Jets and the Giants have some early picks in this round. The Giants have a lot of picks early, two first-rounders, as a matter of fact. What do you think they end up doing, the Giants, and then we'll go with the Jets? Well, I've seen all the speculation that Dave Gettleman, 
who's been in that building with Phil Simms and with Eli Manning for most of their careers. Uh, I don't believe that he thinks Daniel Jones or any of these quarterbacks are Eli Manning. Now, they still might draft one. I don't think they'll draft him at six, at number six or number 17. They need, they need help everywhere. But, I mean, if they could find a right tackle, which would really bolster this offense, and if they could find a starting defensive lineman, I mean, Rashawn Gary is from, went to Patterson Catholic High School, mm. not far from MetLife Stadium. I mean, if you took Rashawn Gary at six and you took Jawan Taylor, the right tackle out of University of Florida, oh, yeah. I mean, you got two starting players right away, and you've improved your team. Now, you know, do they have to draft a quarterback this year, a replacement for Eli? Well, they seem awfully committed to him. And if you protect him a little bit better, the one thing we know about Eli, he doesn't get hurt. I'm not here to jinx him, but he hasn't gotten hurt. So if you're committed to him and you passed on Sam Darnold last year, then just give him every resource to be better and to improve the team around him. And those two players at 6-17, and 17, uh, if Jawan Taylor would be there. But, I mean, I think those two guys improve that team a lot. What about the Jets? They got the third overall pick, and they have already got their quarterback, as you just mentioned. Defensive front? They do, Harry. Yeah, you know, I was up there last week, and I talked to Adam Gase for a while, and I mean, he didn't tip his hand about what he wants to do. But, you know, I mean, they want to continue to build around Sam. They they did that with Le'Veon Bell. They did it with the slot receiver they picked up from Washington. Um, Crowder. I think with the third pick, though, they would love to, Jameson Crowder. I, 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 they would love to trade down, Harry, is what mm. they'd love to do. They'd love to trade down and accumulate more picks. I mean, that's what they would love to do if they could find somebody to take that third pick for whoever player that might be. How about Oakland? Uh, that's the first thing. But I could, think, could, you know, Josh Could Allen they be a player? Who? Uh, yes, I was just trying to throw a team that had some com- picks and commodity that might move into that slot, like Oakland. Well, I mean, Oakland's a spot behind them. Right. So, so if there's something you're that... only going to trade up, Aton. You're only going to trade up to target a player. Mm-hmm. So what player is going to won't be there at three that they could get at four? So I mean, is that I mean, if Kyler Murray doesn't get taken by the Cardinals, which from what I hear, he's going to be taken. I don't know mm-hmm. what player that they would covet and give up some of the resources to go get one spot away. I mean, I think they're going to get a good, good player at four. You know, no matter who it is right now. But I, I don't know who that team would be. Got it. And if, like I said, they're going to target a player that somebody's going to probably take off the board for their own reconnaissance. And, you know, if that would be the case, then they would love to listen to any offer. Speaking of the Raiders, what would you make of Gruden and Mayock throwing all the scouts out and sending them home prior to the draft? What, what's that all about? Well, I mean, it was Easter weekend. I mean, I you know, they do have a flair for the dramatic, the two of them. So, I mean, you know, my friends from, you know, the Tennessee Titans, they were sent home for, you know, Easter weekend and get out of the building and just refresh and get ready for the – so it's not uncommon that guys go mm-hmm. if, you know, you got a big weekend like that we just had. Um, I, I, you know, look, I mean, two guys are making the decision, that whole building. What's The, the other guys have done all the legwork that there is. I mean, why take a chance? I mean, the Eagles had a mole a couple of years ago. They had a, they took everybody's phone away for a while, mm. and they went through everybody's phone to see who would have been sending text messages to somebody. So, I mean, it just takes one guy that reveals something about, you know, your board. I, I don't blame Mike or John, to be honest with you, in that situation. They're going to go home anyways. All the information that they have given you has already been accumulated. It's up to them to decide now what they're going to do in all the possible scenarios. And neither Mayock or Gruden need a lot of sleep, so they can spend 20 hours a day for the next three days, you know, going through all the scenarios that might, be, you know, become available. Hey, Baldy, before we get to the Eagles, what are your thoughts on Washington and, and what they may do 15? Well, I don't think – I mean, I think they're very interested in Josh Rosen, but they're not interested in giving the – you know, the 15th pick for that spot. I mean, they need a lot of help. It'd be good if they do get Josh Rosen, if that deal does come come about, which would make a lot of sense. You get Josh Rosen for three years at $6 million total. Mm-hmm. And if he becomes a starting quarterback, you've got the, the cheapest, most inexpensive quarterback in the league. And so, the, to me, I mean, they need a lot of help at receiver. And they've been needing help at wide receiver. And this draft has a bunch of good ones. Marquise Brown. So, 
Well, Marquise Brown or DK Metcalf, I mean, I'm not as high on him, but like I said, Nikhil Harry, I don't think you need to spend the 15th pick on him. But, you know, they can't keep an offensive lineman healthy either, and they haven't for the last three years. And it's the downfall of their team every year. And they got a great defensive line coach. So, uh, you know, or an offensive line coach, Bill Callahan. So, you know, I mean, if Jawan Taylor was there, would they add him to the mix? Um, there's a lot of options they could do at 15, but – uh, it, 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 it will all revolve around if they get this deal done for Josh Rosen. Yeah, interesting stuff. Hey, Baldy, one more. You know, obviously, Eagles pick at 25. They got, uh, you know, needs on the offensive line. At some point, uh, uh, you know, you got to get a left tackle. Uh, this, you know, Peters isn't going to last forever. You know, and I think you're, you're whistling by the graveyard if you think he's going to stay vertical for 16 more games. But they've also got needs in defensive front, inside linebacker, running back. You know, they could possibly take end or receiver. What, what position do you think they'd, ra- they'd like to have addressed in the first round? Well, I think they want a day one starter. I mean, I think Jonathan Abram appeals to them at 25. They have, you know, they have 25, 53, and 57, Harry. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think they'd love to come away with a safety, an offensive lineman, and a guy that can start or at least rotate right away on the defensive line. I mean, I think those are immediate needs. Um, but, you know, their philosophy of building around Carson, they're never going to get very far away from that. So they've vetted, you know, they've looked at all these wide receivers. And, you know, even though they brought in Deshaun Jackson, um, I mean, I they wouldn't go very far away from adding a receiver to that mix. I don't think they'll spend a first-round pick on a running back. Although, you know, Justice Hill, David Montgomery, I mean, those guys in the, uh, you know, late second round, or if they trade back from the second round, pick them up in the third round, I mean, those guys I think are going to be starting running backs in this league. And even though they picked up Jordan Howard, I think they'd like to get a young guy that they can start working in right away right now. Baldy, we love you, man. Thank you for the time. I know yeah, it's as busy man. of a week as it gets for you, brother. Thank you, sir. Uh, my pleasure, guys. Take care, man. Yeah, got, got, it. got to follow him on Instagram At Baldy and, NFL and on Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. Same on and both.